You've been backup dancer with some of the artists you produced. Has being on both sides of the fence helped creating music? I think so. Yeah, we've uh, learned, you know, since we're around these singers all the time, we've kind of learned the inside scoop and uh, how they handle situations and being in clubs and nightclubs and different events and seeing it from their point of view. So I think it has totally helped, plus the connections. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, we've been really lucky to work with a lot of artists now producing and remixing who we've danced for, so it's really awesome to be doing that. And they've helped us a lot in our career. What is your biggest misconception you feel people not familiar with dance music have about your market of dance music? Hmm. Good question. I think um, a lot of people just think the uh, music is for the for the gym or uh, to go out to the club, but like a lot of people, you know, are writing really cool lyrics and really cool uh, really cool music, so I, I think people just think it's like they do it on their computer and it's like quick like that, but a lot of people, you know, put a lot of work into it, so it's, you know, it's people are talented who do it. When you guys are doing a remix, how long does it take you to usually do? I think the quickest was a week, and then this song we've been working on, um, you know, an original song for 10 months, I think, when we started writing it, um, but usually probably a month maybe, or a couple weeks for a remix. Both of you are producers, remixers, dancers, and twins brothers. Do you think this is a unique package based on breaking into the music industry? I think it's kind of unique. And uh, there, you know, there aren't a lot of like dancing DJs, you know, twin dancing twin DJs out there. So like, it's been, you know, fun to kind of like expose people to that. And, uh, and it, you know, obviously helped us. It's like, it's something different and unique that they don't see everywhere. So it helps us stand out a little bit and gets, you know, more notice for our music. Yeah, double the trouble. It's a, a little gimmick. <laughs> so really, who is the bad boy of the group? I would say definitely Derek is. He's, he's a tough cookie. I'd say definitely Doug. <laughs> Where do you feel the future of dance music is headed? Good question. Um, I think it's coming on more top 40 radio stations. So like everything seems to have that kind of beat right now so I think um, I don't know I, I think it might be going back bringing out some elements of disco and different styles like that and then I don't know we'll we'll see yeah. where it goes yeah definitely seems dance music definitely seems to once again be taking over the mainstream which is you know very cool can you elaborate about your future project with Natalie Reed yep um, we are co-writing the song with Quinn Coleman and it's uh, Natalie Reed's an awesome performer so it's gonna be a young hip kind of club type vibe to it and it should be coming out and we're, well, we're going to go into the recording studio in the next couple months. As artists I think women are really coming a long way. I think, I think there's some amazing, I think finally really great musicians are coming forward as well as women are learning that singing is also a musical instrument in and of itself. I think people like Jasmine Sullivan are amazing um, and I think I think there's some a young crop of, 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 of artists that are allowing themselves to not only sing but to do be multi-talented which is really great you know and understanding that it's okay to be a fabulous dancer and like the, the JLo's of the world I mean it's like to be not only a triple threat to, but to be a writer Jill Scott in a new series you know on HBO it's like it's so great I think I think women are doing all right sisters are doing okay for themselves new singles called I want a bad boy at a time yeah I'm from an era when bad when you call somebody oh that's bad that's bad was a good thing um, I'm looking for a bad boy and, and I think these are bad boys because they, they act like they're really tough and everything but at the end of the day they're really nice kids and they're, they're, they have their mom here. I mean they're just really, really sweet, sweet guys who pay their bills. Hey, how about that? Who don't just live on credit. Hey, how about that? Who, you know, care about family and honor and courage and understand those big words. So to me that's bad. I want that Obama kind of bad, like change the world bad. I'm not talking about the bad. I didn't say his name. Allegedly. Allegedly. I don't want that kind of bad in my life and I don't think we need it, you know. Um, if that's, you know, um, you know, I don't want to ruin my credit kind of bad. I want a guy who's really, and I think that's what we're, we should be upholding, you know. Do you still get the same amount of enjoyment performing now than when you first started? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I've broken my legs. I've been in a wheelchair for a year, so I know it. I'm grateful for every day that somebody wants to hear me sing. That's why I sing whenever I can, whether it's, you know, in my church at Agape, if, I, if it's a jazz club in Europe, if it's a jazz festival in Hawaii, if it's, you know, a, a hot dance club in Los Angeles. 
or you know, on a big stage, you know, or if it's I, I did the inauguration and it's like I love that that I'll sing where I can because that's my gift. And so our our job and our charge is to give our gifts away. What made you work with the Perry Twins? You happen to be friends with them or what? Well, I heard them in clubs and I was approached by a producer that wanted us to collaborate. And it's just really exciting because a lot of places in West Hollywood don't even, they haven't even heard our music, but they know who I am, they know who the Perry Twins are, and they're excited for us to perform, and it's really exciting. Hi, my name is Natalie Reed, and you're watching Maximo TV.